Hello and welcome back to this series of how to make videos aimed at uh, teachers and teaching assistants in primary and middle schools. Um, I think that uh, keeping animals in schools should be uh, encouraged rather than discouraged. Um, others dis disagree with that and I think an ideal animal to keep in schools is uh, stick insects. There are thousands of different species. Most of them are easy to keep. This one uh, is a Thailand stick insect, it's a female, um, and they eat blackberry bush leaves, bramble. Uh, they're easy to breed so the children can study their whole life cycle. Uh, in a, I, I've actually made a, another video in this series where I show the five different species that I keep here at Ivydale. So if you're going to keep stick insects you're going to need a, a cage to put them in. You can buy stick insect cages, they're excellent, uh, very uh, robustly constructed. Um, unfortunately they are 50, 60 pounds each um, and I know that many schools have got very tight budgets these days. Um, I've got uh, seven stick insect cages here at Ivydale and I've made them all. So I'd like to show you how I make a stick insect cage. Um, I use, yes you've guessed it, my favourite material, Corex. It's this plastic sheet. Uh, I actually sell it from my technology shop. You can also buy it from most uh, education suppliers if you look in the D&T section. Uh, it comes in two thicknesses. This is the thicker, stronger 4mm thick and there's a 3mm thick. You could make your stick insect cage out of either thickness. Um, I make it out of 4mm um, to get the maximum strength. Uh, I'm also I also use this um, square section stick wood, this is 8mm by 8mm, again I sell it, it's available from my technology shop, um, all prices, at the moment this is 20p, these are 20p each, um, this sheet of Corex is £2, um, again the wood um, is also available from most educational suppliers that have a D&T section in their catalogue. Um, the main problem with making a stick insect cage yourself is what are you going to use for the transparent window? And the ones you buy they use Perspex or polycarbonate. You can buy that in uh, uh, DIY centres but then you've got the problem of um, cutting it to the size you want. Um, for my stick insect cages I use um, this um, celluloid, I'm not quite sure, ac acetate. Uh, we've got a big roll of it here at uh, Ivydale that I bought several years ago. It's basically going to last forever. Um, I think you can buy wrapping paper now that's just clear transparent. So, uh, so have, have a look in a, in a greetings card shop uh, or possibly an art centre. Um, you've obviously got to treat it with a lot more care than uh, thicker perspex and you've got to clean it very carefully as well. Um, for the base of the stick insect cage uh, I nearly always manage to find a piece of MDF in a skip. Um, obviously you always get permission if you take anything out of a skip. It would have been even better if it was the um, white melamine covered uh, MDF because that would make it easier to clean. And I've just cut this to size. Uh, I tend to make my stick insect cage a little bit larger because I've got some species, some larger stick insect species. Um, this is approximately, I think, 40 centimetres by 40 centimetres. Um, no, uh, no, it's 36 centimetres by 36 centimetres. I've actually got one of the species, if you look at the other video where I show my stick insects, which are absolutely huge, and I'm currently making um, an even bigger stick insect cage to give them plenty of um, elbow room. So what I do is I use the square section wood to build um, a box. So this wood is 600 millimetres long, so that's the size that I use for the uh, cage. So we've got four pieces and three pieces going around here. I don't know if I can hold it up, can you see the, the three pieces around the sides? But notice 
that I haven't put a piece at the back. That's because um, I like to have a slide out tray. So I've got a piece of corex here. I've framed it in this square section wood. An extra piece here to stop them escaping. And then that slides in like that. So it makes it a bit easier to clean them out because all the droppings, um, bits of leaves and eggs, you can take them all out by sliding the tray out. So once you've built the uh, uh, frame out of the C100 wood, you then um, clad it in the uh, Corex. This um, Corex, uh, I use a, a sharp craft knife. I'm not sure I'd let uh, pupils loose on one of these without close supervision at least. Um, it's very easy to cut Corex if, if you're in the, in the flutes. So once you go along you can just slide the knife down, obviously be very careful. Cutting across you could use a, a metal ruler and a craft knife. Uh, much quicker as if you've got the old type of guillotine that um, some stationery rooms still have. Um, you could use any colour. I've used the transparent Corex here for the sides to let a bit more light in. Um, around the back to provide access um, I've built a, a sliding door so I've got um, a strip of 4mm Corex behind this green piece here, a strip there and a strip there to provide a space and then some 3mm Corex over it a little bit wider so that I can slide in a panel like that. Can you see how that works? Obviously you need another piece across the bottom to stop the panel from going down too far. And that will give you access for changing the leaves and uh, uh, moving the sticky insects and collecting eggs. So that's the two sides and the back. The, the front part, so I mean some of my sticky insect cages it's the front part that's movable. But if you're using this delicate film, um, it's best to ha I find it's best to have this fixed in place. Now, sticking this on to the Corex, um, I've used spray glue. So I've, I've sprayed all around here, and then very carefully, I'll just move this out of the way, drop the film onto the Corex, try not to get wrinkles. The technique that I use is to hold it in um, a U-shape and then drop it down onto the glued surface. Uh, make sure you completely cover the glue. If you leave any sticky surface showing, the sticky insects will get their feet caught to it, caught on, on the glue. So make sure that you've completely covered the um, glue. It may not look very strong but I, I've got some of these that I've made with this material that are five years old and still going strong. When you clean them you must clean it with a, with a soft cloth and obviously be, be quite careful. So I'm um, just going to glue this on. going to glue it on with a glue gun. Now the problem here is that glue gun glue sets in five seconds and you've got long distances to go. So you do have to be very quick. So we'll run along the top here and then down halfway perhaps. And then very quickly get it lined up and get that glued on. That's not looking too bad. And then hopefully I should be able to just gently bend this up to get access to glue the rest of it. It doesn't matter if there are some gaps. Let's get my glue gun organised. There we go. This is a high melt glue gun, so you've got a little bit longer than with the low melt, but you do have to work quite quickly. You could use a staple gun to fix the corks to the wood. There we go. That's worked quite well. My back block is collapsing. Okay, 
So we've now got our front securely fixed on. Um, last thing to do is to glue the lid on and now we can put our stick inset cage, get our um, bramble rather, in its jam jar of water. If you don't have too many stick insects I find that bramble in a jar of water like this will last 10-14 days to keep the water topped up. So we'll just tuck that in. If you're going to move the stick inset cage um, around a lot you might want to have a piece, a loop of string to tie the uh, jam jar of water to the side of the cage so it doesn't fall down. So we'll just put the sliding panel back and I mustn't forget I've got the lid to glue on but that's my homemade Corex uh, stick inset cage. I hope you found it useful.